When you live in Colorado and have a disability that makes it difficult for you to accomplish common daily living activities on your own, you may be able to receive assistance through Medicaid specifically to help you with these tasks. This assistance can be provided to you if you qualify for one of Medicaid's waivers. In this context, the term waiver simply means an additional set of non-medical benefits for which a person may qualify to receive on top of their regular Medicaid benefits. The services and assistance a person receives through a waiver are also called Home and Community-Based Services, or HCBS, because you can receive these services in your home, including temporary spaces where a person might stay, like a hotel, a shelter, or on the streets. And you can also receive these services when you are out and about in your community, whether you're at work, eating at a restaurant, visiting a friend's house, or exercising at a gym. In this video, I'm going to share with you detailed information about the kinds of waivers that Colorado has for qualifying adults and children. However, there are many steps to qualifying for any waiver, and you must meet certain criteria and undergo an assessment to determine whether you are eligible for a specific waiver and the services you would receive if you do qualify for that waiver. I highly recommend that you check out another video called Level of Care that gives you an overview of services that might be available to you and what the process looks like to qualify for the waivers I will discuss here. Before we start, remember that while the qualifications talk about nursing home or hospital level of care, no one will force you to be in a hospital or nursing facility. Now let's dig into some details about the 10 different waivers a Colorado resident might qualify for if they have a disability. There are four waivers specifically for children, and there are six waivers that adults can qualify for. I'll start by discussing the waivers for children first. Let's begin with the Children's Home and Community-Based Services Waiver, or CHCBS. Children from age zero until their 18th birthday may qualify for the CHCBS waiver if they require the same level of care they would need if they lived in a skilled nursing facility or during acute hospital stay. But remember, they would receive this care at home. Next, children from age zero through 20 years of age may qualify for the Children's Habilitation Residential Program waiver, or CHRP, if their disability-related needs puts them at risk or in need of an out-of-home placement because the child requires a high level of supervision and they have a developmental or intellectual disability, IDD, or delay. Third, the Children with Life Limiting Illness Waiver, or CLLI, provides services for children who are 18 years of age and younger and are diagnosed with a terminal or life-limiting illness. Unlike adult hospice, a child does not have to forego curative care under this waiver. Also, a child needs only to have a life-limiting illness to qualify for this waiver, and they do not need to have received an expectation for having a specific amount of time to live. Generally speaking, if a child is not expected to live past young adulthood, the child will qualify for this waiver. Finally, the Children's Extensive Services Waiver, or CES, helps children 18 years or younger who have IDD and require extraordinary support to remain in their home. Children on this waiver need to demonstrate a very high level of supervision and interventions, including a need for care at least once or twice overnight. Having discussed the four waivers that children could qualify for, now I'll go over the six waivers available to qualifying adults. Let's start with the Elderly, Blind, and Disabled Waiver, or EBD, which is the largest waiver program. This waiver is for people who have a disability, blindness, or who are older than 65 and need help with common activities of daily living. Next, the Complementary and Integrative Health Waiver, or CIH, provides services for individuals over the age of 18 who are living with a spinal cord injury, either traumatic or non-traumatic, multiple sclerosis, certain brain injuries, spinal bifida, muscular dystrophy, or cerebral palsy who use wheelchairs or other mobility devices because they cannot walk. The CIH waiver was formally referred to as the spinal cord injury or SCI waiver. Moving on, the Brain Injury Waiver, or BI, provides services to qualifying individuals who have an injury to the brain, whether acquired from trauma, disease, or from birth, and have a significant functional impairment. To qualify for this waiver, you must be 16 years of age or older, and your brain injury must have occurred prior to your 65th birthday. 
A fourth waiver is a Developmental Disability Waiver, or DD. If you are 18 years of age or older, this waiver provides you with services and or support if you have intellectual and developmental disabilities, or IDD, and you need support 24 hours a day. This waiver provides residential services that you can receive in a variety of settings, including the family home. The waiver is designed to help people participate in their community. Everyone on this waiver has a residential program and a day program, but day programs vary with some that are available for only a few hours a week and some that are also available several days a week. As of 2023, this is the only waiver that has a waiting list. If you are 18 years old or older and you have a developmental disability, but you need support for less than 24 hours a day, you could qualify for a different waiver called the Supported Living Services Waiver or SLS. Importantly, if you do need 24 hours of support for developmental disability, but you are on the wait list for the DD waiver, you can receive supports to remain in your home and community using the SLS waiver while you wait for the DD waiver. Finally, the sixth waiver available under Colorado Medicaid program is the Community Mental Health Supports Waiver, or CMHS. This waiver is for people who are 18 or older who experience a severe and persistent mental health need and require assistance with day-to-day -day activities. Many people on this waiver need supports like non-medical transportation, homemaking, or help with getting out of the house to do something during the day. When you qualify for the waivers I just discussed, you are also usually able to receive a variety of services available under most of these waivers. For example, you are likely to be able to receive personal care, which includes help with dressing, eating, bathing, grooming, laundry, meal preparation, feeding, accompanying you when you go out, and other day-to-day -day activities to keep you in your own home. You could also qualify for transportation for non-medical reasons to help you go grocery shopping, employment, visit family and friends, visit a local park, or attend a religious service, for example. Some also qualify to receive respite care, which enables caregivers opportunities to take care of themselves. Of course, once you have qualified, you can decide which services you want. Once you are on a waiver, you are required to get an annual assessment to make sure your services are appropriate for your needs and working for you. Though everyone who is on a waiver receives this annual assessment, if you have any changes in your condition between those assessments and you require additional support or different services, or if your services are not working properly, simply contact your case manager to let them know you need a reassessment. In this video, you learned a bit about the different types of waivers for both children and adults and some of the common services available in all the waivers. If you would like to know more or get started with the waiver process, you will need to contact your case manager. If you are not yet a Medicaid recipient and you would like to apply, we have included links to find a case management agency near you as well as links to the Medicaid forms, both in English and Spanish. And thank you for joining us.